to know your point of view. Hi everyone. Welcome to Evening TV. I'm Evening Ransom. Well, with some time that's passed since the Mexico meetup, uh, people people had st started asking me whatever came of whatever came of all that, and I have to say that it was pretty shocking to me that uh, that anyone continued to subscribe to those channels. But then I remembered exactly how I started my very first video. I don't know if you were, I, feel, I don't know if you all remember, but when I came out with that very first video, I basically spoke on something I didn't name what it was, but this is what I said. I know we want to be right. I know how much we want to be right. And so anyone that watches those channels, if you're watching this, you're not going to want to believe me. Because you're gonna, you know, you go, oh no, I, I you know, I followed the, I followed those people for a year or two years, you know, I, I, I go to, I, I, they've given me counseling services, whatever. I paid them money, and once you're invested like that, you want to be right about it. You don't want to be wrong because it's a huge betrayal, and you don't want to be duped. And it, nobody wants that. I kill it. It's just like, it's just like when you try and you try and go tell somebody about the the abuse you, you you experience and no one believes you I totally get it I don't expect a great big response here about how anyone's going to go oh my god you know thank God for telling me I don't I know that's not going to happen that's why I resent I kind of resent the position I'm in because there's nothing good from this to come to me this can really only you know only be bad for me you know it's like I didn't need this what I'm talking about there is something called a cognitive bias or uh, confirmation bias actually is a is a type of co cognitive bias, and what that is is basically where the when you tell yourself something, the basically the first information you get on something it really, and you make a choice about about a certain person or especially people, that you will then only look for things that confirm your 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 beliefs your choice that will make you right in making the choice that you made because we don't want to be wrong. We want to, you know, and, and part of this is a natural test to, to simplify our environment because we have such a complex world that we have these biases built in so that we don't have to rethink every single thing from the very beginning as though we know nothing. So we, we come in with these biases that basically fill in the information with what we have experienced in the past, what we believe, you know, from previous experiences, from our culture from etc cetera, etc cetera. and so but it's very very dangerous and and wrong a lot of the time and it makes it so that we can't be discerning we can't see things clearly and and that what you hear what you learn first about someone is very very important which is why uh which is why in a smear campaign for instance the narcissistic abuser will come out right away and make sure that they spread this information around about about you to everybody because it'll be very hard for you to undo that. It'll be very hard for you to come in as a second person and convince anyone that you're telling the truth. And narcissists really understand this concept. They understand how human psychology really works. To see also because of the cognitive bias that we all have. We all have a cognitive bias that shapes the way we perceive the world. And of course, oftentimes what they'll do is they'll come out as though they're the victim. They'll come out and they'll paint a completely opposite story from what the truth is and say that they're the victim. And so you're trying to figure out, how, you know, how do you figure out who the victim is? So if you're looking through the lens of feminism, and I'm not saying anything is wrong with that, but hear me out. If you're looking through the lens of feminism, your cognitive bias is going to tell you to immediately believe the woman, which could be very dangerous because I have worked with several male clients who were falsely accused of sexual harass sexual assault, excuse me, of sexual assault, among other things, by predator females. So your cognitive bias could also really be distorting your perception of who the victim is and who the abuser is. In this case, however, they're really having to come up against a lot of evidence that is, you know, they're having to overlook just a ton of evidence, all of it, all of it presented by Kim herself. I mean, I mean, 
I present the emails, but then I prove that they came from her. But more than that, um, most most of what she does, she does right in front of everyone. And so that's what's really especially interesting about this particular particular case. And the lies are just so many. There's just lie after lie after lie. Um, this, by the way, this is the picture that she was calling a mugshot, that she said she had a mugshot of me. This, this was the picture she was calling a mugshot. But to speak on, you know, how powerful this bias is, even Elle, even the victim of abuse, even she gave Kim more, more of a chance than I did. What I, I discovered at some point after I come out with the, the first video that she was still talking to Kim. And, and, um, and only after... Kim turned on her again and started really threatening her and attacking her all over again and tried to get her to recant her story. Did she, did she, you know, once and for all finally give up on Kim? But, but she had, you know, even after all this abuse and, and all this stuff, and she had not defended her and all this stuff, she actually was still wanted to believe. She really wanted to, came out and told us all this stuff about, after Elle had come out with the story, Kim came out and went completely against David. Then she, uh, came back and acted like she didn't ever even say any of that stuff and acted like she, David was completely fine and, and, I, and Elle and I were the abusers and she was the victim. It was just unreal and all of it right out there in the open as though it was as though people were just going to forget that she had said it. It was incredible. First, she's the one who tells me what happened. To extreme alarm within our community. The anger, aggression, isolation, mind control, humiliation, name calling, and fear he caused her. No fucking way, not on my watch. If we, knew, if we know about this and do nothing, we are simply not good people. And, want, and I want to be a good person. <laughs> do you hear what I'm... Listen. Right there, with her own lips, her own words. If we know about this and do nothing, we are simply not good people. And I want to be a good person. My husband is a technical guy. He does computer programming and stuff. So he's put on my blog the emails with um, a chart and an explanation about how you can how you can authenticate the emails, how you know that these that they came actually from Kim picture of a predator a very intentional predator and it is my belief that he should be exposed in an attempt to protect our community now and in the future exposed in a way that first and foremost protects this group directs the blame where it belongs and reduces the risk of harm to other victims and survivors then of course as we know she completely turns on a dime and changes it all around and makes herself the victim unbelievably makes herself the victim I think we all know who the target was initially. Of course, the target's always been me. And of course, why do they do it? They do it because that way they can they can get pity from you. They can um, get away with things. They can manage perceptions. They can avoid responsibility. They they can do it because they feel entitled to whatever taking whatever from the real victim. They just do it for basically the reasons they do it are all the reasons that you could identify who the narcissist is if you're trying to figure out who the narcissist is the reason behind the reason the way why they're doing it is, a, is kind of a giveaway this person has a real real problem with empathy it's a video that i wish i wasn't making this is a video that i didn't want i don't want to be making I Oh, I wish I didn't have to do this. Oh, I wish I wasn't doing this. But if you were an empath, you would understand that we don't like really doing these kind of videos. We don't like, we have a clash between what we should do and what we want to do. And it's, it's just hard. If they don't ignore it, they will make fun of you for feeling sad. They will make fun of you for crying. They will mock your pain. Aggressively is because it's different when you're fighting for a principle, you're fighting for justice, you're fighting for the truth, you're fighting for, you know, when you're fighting for a higher concept like that, it's one thing. But when you're fighting for survival, it's something else entirely. Anything is game. 
you will do anything in survival mode. Right? People live in the survival mode. And so that's why they only have, they only have really this moment, you know, and they will say and do anything that gives them relief in this moment. And so their relationship to facts is very, very, very fluid because disagree with their, with their, who they're telling you they are. It's like you're trying to kill them. It's like you're taking away who they are. You're trying to erase them and they will fight you like they are fighting for their life and you see it you know you see the aggressiveness and that's why that's why anything is game that's why they will they will make up anything they will say anything they will do anything they will they will try all different tactics and you will become the enemy you you you're, you are the enemy like that instead of trying to communicate their feelings they'll try to once again dictate the other person's feelings and they'll do that with you statements and the you statements are always very accusatory it's always like the other person has some hugely bad motive and the narcissist is convinced that it's such a bad motive so no matter how much the victim tries to reason by saying no I don't feel that way this is how I feel it's always met with no you feel this or you are that when you hear that that conflict like that it kind of begins you begin to see who's communicating in an unhealthy way and who's communicating in a healthier way. Um, source of envy that's just eating away at them. Like, I mean, we've got that one morning just pooped her pants bad, shit running down her legs, boot full of it. And... So this is kind of the stuff that is childish. Um, and we all know the traits of a narcissist is somebody who is still um, at the age, you know, like... A, uh, some victims tell themselves that narcissist is a child. Yes, narcissist is a child, even a very young one, five, six years old, as far as personal growth, development and maturity go. But the narcissist, as opposed to most children, can tell right from wrong. The narcissist is indifferent to this distinction between what ought, what he ought to do and what he should refrain from doing. He is a law unto himself. There's no right or, or wrong except as decreed by the narcissist. She's just not a contender because anyone looking on, and I certainly know by the hundreds and hundreds of emails I've received, that you all see it too. Hundreds and hundreds of emails that you all see it too. Now what you're doing is you're trying to put words into people's mouths. No one sees anything except somebody who's ranting in vileness on their channel. But if you were wanting to help the community, would talk to both parties. Is it? Right there, with her own lips, her own words. If we know about this and do nothing, we are simply not good people. And I want to be a good person. Sorry, not contacting David. Why, after you told people in that conversation by email that he's a predator and they've seen and spoken to Al and they've seen what he was like at the meetup, it's just too much truth in that. For, for somebody to go to a predator and ask a predator, is this true what you did to Elle? Why would somebody... So you're basically saying there that they should needed to at this point. I think the truth was out there and I think everybody... It's um, criminal defamation, criminal slander, criminal harassment, cyber start of an investigative process because, of course, we want to get to the truth. I want to get to the truth. Oh, so, to come to the truth again, but you see, these sociopaths smear campaign before. Their envy is just see this other whack job do it. So they thought they could do it too. It became of that stalker that Kim had because you know what? They didn't meet a very good end, meet a very good end either. You just stop it, you fucking idiot. God, what an idiot. That's where your mask falls, isn't it? So I consider some of the things against me. And David and I had, had quite a chuckle about this. And he said to me, you know, it's a wonder how they always go with this criminal record thing. When confronted with a failure, a defeat, criticism or disagreement, they feel narcissistically injured. Their omnipotence is, omnipotence is threatened. Their omniscience is questioned. Their sense of perfection and uniqueness is in doubt. They become enraged, engulfed by self-reprimand and self-loathing. The narcissist will say anything to obtain narcissistic supply. No regret, no remorse, no self-attribution of guilt, no acknowledgement that he had wronged others or had been wrong.
narcissist or infallible. Anything and is a pathological liar. The digging is like you stumble across the lies without even trying because they're just everywhere. Claimed in comments on her latest video that I have never once said sent one single email ever. No, about about this disorder is presenting itself for us here. So, so a big reason, a big part of why it is perpetuated, why it's so hard, why why they get away with it is because we want to believe them. We want to believe their lies. And oh.